Hey everyone, today in the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to highlight and shade with purple. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And like I said in the intro today, I'm going to show you how to highlight and shade with purple. And for that, I'm going to use Randar here from Gatefall. So purple is one of my absolute favorite colors to work with when painting minis. I think part of that is because it fits the fantasy theme just so well, and that's the majority of sort of what I've paint fantasy themed games. But also I think because I don't find it overly difficult to work with when highlighting and shading. It's not like red or white that are colors that are notoriously difficult to work with. But I think the main thing with highlighting and shading with purple, like most other colours, is just building a really, really strong contrast between the darkest part of your shadows and the brightest part of your highlights. So when painting Randar's Cloak, these are the three purples that I worked with. Clear purple is my darkest purple, then Imperial purple is just a mid-range purple that I have, and then Amethyst purple is my brightest purple. And you can see between the clear purple and the Amethyst purple, there is a big, big difference between them. So by the time the highlighting and the shading is finished, we're going to have a huge amount of contrast between the darker shadows and the brightest highlights. So to start it off, I base coated with clear purple, which is my darkest purple, and that went over a black prime. That just made sure it stayed nice and dark and had lots of depth in the color, because whatever I leave exposed of that base coat color is going to be the darkest part of the shadow. And then I just started to mix in some imperial purple. So for the first layer of the highlighting, it was mostly clear purple with just a little bit of the imperial purple mixed in just to slightly lighten it. And then I just covered any parts of the robe that I thought would get any amount of light. And then for the next layer of the highlighting, which is what you're looking at at the moment, I mixed just more of the Imperial Purple in just to lighten it off further. And then I covered the same sorts of areas that I did with the first layer, but I just slightly reduced the amount of surface area that I was covering in the direction towards where I want the brightest part of the highlight to be. So after this layer is done, there'll be just the straight clear purple, which will be the darkest part of the shadows. Then there'll be the first layer of the highlighting, which is mostly clear purple, and then just a little bit of Imperial purple and then this layer which just has that bit more imperial purple mixed in. But what I'm doing at the end of each layer is feathering out the edges. So just cleaning off the bristles to get rid of the paint but so that they are slightly damp and then just thinning out the edge of each layer. So that as the edge of that layer gets thinner and thinner it gradually lets more and more of the colour underneath to show through and that's what's going to give us nice smooth blends. And now, as you can see, we're at the point where we're highlighting with just straight Imperial Purple. So like the previous layers, I'll just reduce the amount of surface area that I'm covering and then feather out the edges. And then what I'll start to do with the next few layers is start to gradually mix in the Amethyst Purple, which is the brightest purple that I use. So layer by layer, I'll just gradually mix in more and more of the Amethyst Purple and less and less of the Imperial Purple reducing the surface area and feathering out the edges. The process for each layer is going to be exactly the same. It's just that you cover less area with each one. And that is a really important thing to make sure that you are doing, that you are actually reducing the amount of surface area that you're covering because that will help you gradually build up to that brightest highlight because you do need all of those different tones to show through to be able to gradually go lighter and lighter and lighter. So from here until I'm done highlighting Randar's robe, it's just going to be the exact same thing. Just gradually getting lighter, reducing the amount of surface area, and feathering out the edges. So I'm just going to leave you now to watch me highlight and shade the rest of Randar's cloak.
Alright, so just as I'm working on the last layer of the highlighting here, Randar's cloak is finished. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. As always, I really do hope you enjoyed it and found something that you can take away and use in your own painting. If you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button if you haven't, as well as stopping by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.